Hello there. Thanks a lot for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard, and this is one of only a handful, a small handful, of known Jefferson Airplane concert posters that is not psychedelic, a cardboard boxing style concert poster from their heyday, from the Santa Venetia Armory and San Rafael, California, about 20 miles north of San Francisco. It's a cardboard boxer, all right, and uh, the Santa Venetia Armory actually favored this format. They didn't produce psychedelic posters as much as they did this string of cardboard boxers for a lot of the San Francisco bands. And you know, it's kind of a nice alternative. I mean, gotta love the, the, all the beautiful um, psychedelic posters for sure, but maybe, you know, the promoters felt uh, this was a different way to make their, their gigs stand out, to get people to drive 20 miles north, you know, to catch the shows. And they just chose to present information in a different format. And now for us poster collectors, decades later, it works for us because there's plenty of great looking psych airplane posters and now we have a boxing alternative as well. As I said, it's not the only one, but for my money, it's the best one. I think this is just really a sweet looking poster and it's full of all kinds of nice song titles of the day and everything else. So I'm really loving this one, that's for sure. But uh, you know, the Armory um, in Santa Venetia, they, they churned out these boxers over a period of about a year. Um, and there was Big Brother and the Holding Company and Quicksilver Messenger Service, the airplane, the dead, even the 13th floor elevators from Texas. And it, funny enough, only the airplane and the dead have a picture of the band on there. All the others I mentioned, Moby Grape, Quicksilver, Big Brother, with Janice, no photo, it's just all block type. And uh, so that's, you know, sort of a different story. And, you know, a lot of poster collectors really want a photo on there. But of course, most of the psych posters didn't have a photograph either. So. Now, one thing you gotta love about this being January of 1967, it's a really sweet transitional poster in the band's history. You know, it's um, for one thing on either side of the photograph there. I did. I should give you a quick top to bottom scan here. <laughs> Made by Tillman, by the way, out of Oakland. On either side of the band's picture, you've got seven song titles there, and they're all from the first album, Takes Off, where Signe Anderson was the lead singer. However, if you know your history, three months before this, about mid-October, Grace Slick replaced Signe Anderson as the lead singer. So, therefore, you've got the picture in the middle with Grace Slick in the photo. So you've got all these song titles from Takes Off, and then the photo of the band in their new incarnation with Grace Slick, and that's an outtake from the cover sessions for Surrealistic Pillow there. Luckily, by the way, those song titles don't include Chauffeur Blues, <laughs> which was the Signe's one solo showcase on the Takes Off album. And then below all the regular song titles, it says New Release, My Best Friend. And that's the first single released from Surrealistic Pillow. So that's a nod toward the future. That's good. However, it was written by Skip Spence, <laughs> the ex-drummer for the airplane, who left the band eight months ago. So <laughs> that's a big nod back toward the past as far as songwriting credit, even though it's on their upcoming album. And although My Best Friend is a lovely song, it's a nice album track on Pillow, it died as a single. It just didn't go anywhere. But um, AM radio just didn't embrace it at all. But, uh, you know, just call that a poor, a poor A&R choice. I guess by RCA Records, because, you know, the next two singles, as you know, were Somebody to Love and White Rabbit. Now, can you just imagine if, you know, if they had skipped My Best Friend and the A&R department and the band and stuff, Bill Graham was managing by now, too, had picked Somebody to Love as the first single from Surrealistic Pillow. So what you would have here is a Jefferson Airplane boxer from 1967 with words on there that say, New Release, Somebody to Love. <laughs> <laughs> I know, my imagination's working overtime, but how killer would that be? I mean, that's the anthem of the Summer of Love, right? Arguably or not arguably the most famous worldwide known song out of the entire San Fran rock scene. But instead, you've got <laughs> My Best Friend. And that's okay, a lot of collectors would prefer the album track on there, so that's fine. Now, at the top of the poster, the promoters I've mentioned, uh, you know, there's you got Ralph and Al Pepe. They did, uh, actually, Ralph did some alone, and then they did some together. Um, all these Santa Venetia Armory concerts, for sure. And you've got, uh, I love the wording there. It says, 8 p.m. to 1 a.m., take off three full hours. And that's neat because it's sort of saying, go ahead, come to the concert and take off for three hours, rather than just giving the album title of Takes Off. So what a you know, difference a letter makes. Then you've got you know, huge letters there, Jefferson Airplane and everything we've talked about. And then you've got uh, opening band, The Morning Glory. And uh, then Lights by Fun Company. In fact, I'll get in there so you can see 
by Funco. See that? But it's kind of funny because the Pepe's used, I don't know if they kept bringing in different light people or if they just had in-house lights and decided to mix the name up for fun because over the year of these boxing style posters the light show is credited alternately to um, Conrad, Zap, and even the Funny Company and this is the Fun Company so I'm not sure what the story is behind that. Okay and there in the green stripe you've got the date Thursday January 26th. Now this poster is sweet because as I said, it's such a key transitional time for the band. Not only is it just a few weeks before Surrealistic Pillow was released, which I believe was mid-March, it also um, marks the beginning of the band's tenure with Bill Graham as manager. I believe January of 67 was his first full month as their manager. <clears throat> Excuse me, and of course, if you know the airplane, you know that that was a love-hate relationship. Uh, Graham just wanted to work them to death and really maximize, you know, those big hit singles and everything which were coming. And the airplane had a more laid-back attitude, so they probably both benefited for a while, but then had to go their separate ways. Then you've got underneath that, you know, well, of course, you've got the Santa Venetia Armory there, and it says San Rafael. I like that it says no age limit. That's kind of interesting. You don't see that often. And first 1,200 only, pre-sale tickets, $3.00. Now, that's pretty unusual wording. In fact, I can't think. I really can't think off the top of my head of another concert poster I've seen that gives such a, you know, a jab of incentive to hurry up and buy advance tickets. Usually it always says tickets, you know, two bucks in advance, two fifty at the door or whatever. And this is saying, yeah, the tickets, you can get them in advance, but only the first 1,200 people. Then you got to walk up and stand in a long line and buy your ticket, you know, at the door while everybody else is inside dancing to the music or whatever. So the Pepe's did that a lot, though. They'd say first 1,200 only or whatever on a lot of these posters. So that's kind of... Um, kind of interesting and different, you know. And what's funny then is they give you about a dozen ticket locations. You can relax. I'm not going to read them to you. That would be crazy. But look at all that red ink. That's just insane. I have no idea why the Pepe's would go so crazy because of all the other Santa Venetia Armory concert posters, including the Grateful Dead, Big Brother, Quicksilver, and Moby Grape, virtually all of them give no ticket locations where you can buy tickets. I think only Paul Revere and the Raiders, which was their first poster in this run of a year, their first cardboard boxer, um, came close to this and had only half as many ticket locations. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you've got the airplane with 12 locations. That's crazy. But you know something that might very well tie back to something I said earlier? New manager, Bill Graham, hmm? Mr. Marketer himself, I would not be the least bit surprised to know that Bill Graham is the one who, you know, when, when the poster was being submitted for layout or whatever, said, list all these places. We want people to go buy, buy, buy those tickets. So this might very well be a Bill Graham personal touch. Anyway, it's always fun to speculate about old concert posters. It's just, just a huge part of the fun, and I just enjoy the heck out of doing it. So thanks for indulging me while I do. Beautiful poster. Any way you look at it, though, a Tillman from January of 67. The airplane just about, indeed, they have already took off, and they're about to... Um, I guess the birds were already eight miles high from the previous year, so the airplane was just about to ascend and join them up there at 30,000 feet. So, great poster. Thanks a lot for stopping by, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.